Now upon first examination, this might just look like any other normal Android tablet back from around 2015 or so, but looking at it a little bit closer, you'll notice an Intel logo. Indeed, this thing does have one of the last ever made consumer Intel Atom CPUs, and this whole tablet is technically a full-on computer. So we've done something probably nobody should ever do, and we've installed full-on Linux to the system. So seeing how usable it is, well, let's take it out for a spin. I hope you guys stick around for this very funky video idea. Linux on an old tablet. So here's a particular tablet, as you saw in the intro. Uh, ignoring the fact they're different colors, you might just assume that the Dell one is like an Android tablet. I mean, you could see why someone would think that. But as I mentioned in the intro, it's much more than that. So let's turn it on. As you can see, it works, and even if it, everything is small, we can still zoom in, and it's very smooth, as you can see. I have like zero problems being able to use this, it's just a simple web browsing machine. Now, let's bring up something different, like, uh, if I can spell right, let's bring up Apple. Apple's website works perfectly fine, as you'd expect. It's a really good web browsing experience, it's just a modern version of Firefox. I would look that up in the about section, but you guys know what Firefox is. And if you really wanted to make the UI larger, you could probably use um, uh, this right here to change the resolution. I don't really care too much about that. Um, I'll show more about this later, but if you want a landscape viewing, um, just close that. Uh, if you want landscape, you can also do that with my little button I set up in Polybar. Once again, I'll show the full extent of how the, my, the bar I set up works later in the video. But yeah, Firefox, 10 out of 10. And here we have it. Looked up a random video, uh, Top Gear, peak of television, clearly. And as you can see, it runs perfectly fine. Nice and smooth, no drops. And we're running at, let's see if I can look here. I don't know what I did there. I'm trying to look at, yeah, 720p. So 720p on a display like this would be just, it's perfectly fine. And of course you can look at comments. And I do think uh, FreeTube is a very well-made YouTube client. Maybe even better than just running it in youtube.com on Firefox. So a 10 out of 10, good stuff. And we're officially in Minecraft. So let's grab our weird um, netbook over here. I brought out my little netbook as a mouse pad. And it's running quite good. Now I know it's probably a bit cheaty because we are technically running on my main server. So rendering is being helped by the more powerful system running the server, of course, but still. It runs quite well. If I can bring up F3, there's FPS. And it probably will slowly smooth out a bit more as you play more. I'm trying to find, because I'm not used to such a low render distance, but I was trying to find my base. There it is. Let's just drop in there. Yeah, so 24 FPS, 20, 10. 27, it's a bit all over the place. I assume once you play enough, it'll probably smooth out to around 25, maybe 30. Um, let's turn it off for now. It's, it feels smooth. I don't think anybody can disagree. It feels okay. As you're going into a new area, it might be a little laggy, but still a lot of the help is coming from the main system. So uh, not bad. And I should have touch support in game. It's gonna freeze for a second because it's a little bit cranky. And it's not really probably meant to run on something like this, but it's running. So it is what it is. And yeah, we're in. Once we're in actually, um, we have our touch support. 
We have camera panning. But I can't jump. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it runs. We have jump. We can't move, though, the camera well. Oh, we can't even move the camera now. Okay, so it definitely has some problems. Like, I straight up can't. I straight up can't, like, you can see I'm trying to move around. Um, I'm trapped under a roof, I guess, which is cool. But it works. Um, if you wanted to hook up a keyboard and mouse to this thing, I, I assume you could find, like, a clip-on piece of hair. Downside of having a cat. But, um, yeah, if you wanted to have decent movement, you could probably hook up, like, a keyboard and mouse to this thing. A clip-on tablet-like keyboard would work quite well. Um, but yeah, performance is good. It just... <laughs> oh god, what is it doing? <laughs> it's just jumping on its own now. Um, let's kill that. We have a kill switch here. I'd give that... <laughs> Without a keyboard and mouse, like, 3 out of 10 is not that good, but... I could see it being good if you had, like, a controller or keyboard or mouse, so... Roblox on this tablet, quite funny. Now doing the next thing just for fun, we're using Steam Remote Play, and this is any Steam game. I don't know why it's actually so laggy, because it's the same internet connection. You can see this orange netbook here, like I'm using the mouse pad as. I've personally tried using Steam Remote Play on that netbook, and it ran more or less perfectly smooth. So I don't know if it's just an issue with the tablet, like maybe like the Wi-Fi card or something, causing, like you can see the... The, it, it's clearly complaining about connection. I just can't really explain why it's doing that. Now, well, obviously, I guess technics is still more FPS you'd get from the system itself. No way an Intel Atom and HD is going to run something like uh, Ratchet and Clank with RTX on, but it's just weird. It's kind of a shame that um, performance is so bad because, I mean, once again, uh, two gigabyte of RAM, single core AMD netbook here, uh, can run Steam Remote Play perfectly fine. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically just remote um, view over connection from your main system over to a different device. So uh, kind of a shame. It would have been really cool if it worked, but eh, I guess it is what it is. You can't have everything. We've had a lot of good stuff like Minecraft run okay. Roblox ran decently. Firefox was perfect. So if then eh, one downside, I guess it is what it is. I'm not going to try to play any more than this. Hey guys. <laughs> hey, I'm still killing them. So basically the layout is as follows. Right here, the numbers is how you switch between different open currently applications. So if we had like Firefox open in one, Prism Launcher open in another, you just switch like that. Right here is our, well, switch to landscape or horizontal. So if you just click that, it will switch over easily to, well, that, or horizontal, or sorry, landscape. Uh, right here is a full screen button, which sometimes breaks, so I'm not going to press that, but you get what it would do if it did work. Over here, damn cat hair. Trying to say that again. Right here, battery indication, of course. Right here, we have time and date. I was going to add weather, but it would probably get a bit too crowded. Right here is probably the most important thing is the keyboard. And if we were in horizontal, it'd be a lot more comfortable to type on. Haven't really bothered to configure it for our landscape yet. Uh, exit button right there to exit out of anything currently open. Like Firefox, we could exit out of that. Copy and paste is right here. So you could highlight text, copy it with that button, and then quickly paste it. And fairly straightforward. And as we mentioned earlier on, just a click of the Arch logo, if I can click it, brings up the top D menu, which lets us easily open any application on the system. Is it cursed to run a tiling window manager on, <laughs> on a touchscreen tip based device? Yes. But I've had little problem. Really, the only problem I ran in today was Steam Remote Play, and that's not really the fault of the device because once again because if this thing can run it 
and I don't know what's wrong with the tablet, but that's the only downside I've come across. So Arch Linux on a tablet. I support the idea. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. And yes, I will try to keep making videos. It's been like a month or two. <laughs>